Good day, everyone, and welcome back to ASEAN News. With me, Vanessa. Catholic leader pray for Indonesian earthquake and Sriwijaya air jet crash victims. Pope Francis pray for Indonesia after an earthquake of magnitude 6.2 struck West Sulawesi province, killing at least 73 people. Cari fratelli e sorelle, esprimo la mia vicinanza alle popolazioni dei Dear brothers and sisters, I express my closeness to the people of the island of Sulawesi in Indonesia hit by a strong earthquake. I pray for the dead, for the wounded, and for those who have lost their homes and jobs. Per i feriti e per quanti hanno perso la casa e il lavoro. BNPB spokesman Raditya Jati says after the earthquake, more than 820 people are injured and over 27,800 left their homes. The Pope also prayed for the victims of a Sriwijaya air jet crashed into the Java Sea with 62 on board. Authority says floats in North Sulawesi and South Kalimantan province each have killed at least five this month while landslides in West Java province have killed at least 29. East Java's Semeru mountain erupted on 16th of January 2021, but there are no reports yet of casualties or evacuations. Philippine President meets with Chinese Foreign Minister on enhancing bilateral cooperation. During the meeting, Wong says China highly appreciates the political resolve and the strategic visions of the Philippine president shows in shepherding the turnaround and continuous development of the relations between China and the Philippines. At the same time, China will give guidance to Chinese companies to carry out vaccine purchasing cooperation with the Philippine site as soon as possible. Wang also adds that China strongly supports the Philippines' efforts to achieve economic recovery as soon as possible. Wang also assures Duterte that China firmly supports the Philippines in safeguarding its sovereignty and national dignity. China is willing to cooperate with the Philippines to firmly defend their respective legitimate rights and interests, protect the common interests of the developing countries, and to safeguard international fairness and justice. Meanwhile, Duterte says the sustained and close high-level exchanges between the Philippines and China provide strategic guidance for developing bilateral ties steadily. The Philippine side will firmly implement the important consensus reached by the two countries on enhancing the comprehensive strategic operations between the two sides. Duterte also expresses sincere gratitude to China for great assistance in helping the Philippines combat the COVID-19 pandemic, especially the timely donation of COVID-19 vaccines Duterte said he is looking forward to strengthening the two countries' cooperation on COVID-19 vaccines. Wong held talks with his counterpart Theodore Loxin. Wong also attends a lunch ceremony of the Manila Forum for China and the Philippines Relations and the OR for promoting Philippines-China understanding via video link. Singapore's healthcare workers receive vaccination shots to fight coronavirus epidemic. Healthcare workers at one of Singapore's major hospitals received COVID-19 vaccination shot as part of the city-state's drive to first inoculate its frontline workers. Oh, sigh of relief. Uh, oh yeah, sure. That I didn't collapse, I didn't fall down. Oh, feel good, yeah. Feel good. There's actually not much difference before and after. Uh, it's not painful, don't feel any reaction, just uh, before and after is exactly the same. No pain, no nothing. Several staff at Glen Eagles, a large private hospital, receives their first of two shots of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine amidst a backdrop of the therapeutic music. Two, three, any pain? Oh, no, okay, pushing medicine in, all right, we are done. According to Melvin Han, CEO of Glen Eagles Hospitals, Glen Eagles owner, IHH Singapore has already inoculated 550 of its staffs. Around 8,000 staff, or 80% of the IHH staff, are signed up for the free vaccinations, which are issued in two shots. 
I think there are often concerns that all our staff get and our doctors will get when they get the vaccination because you know they they, they could be they are concerned about you know maybe side effects and things like that and adverse events but I think overall uh, people are feeling very um, positive about um, getting the vaccine they are hopeful that this will bring the whole nation back to a more normal state of operations and that is what we hope to achieve. Singapore began vaccinating healthcare workers last year and expects to have enough vaccine doses for all its 5.7 million people by the third quarter of 2021. The Singapore government announces plans to begin preparations for the inoculation of 37,000 employees in the maritime and aviation industries. Rescuer patient float inundated area with rubber boats at South Kalimantan province. Floating in the province of South Kalimantan on Borneo Island killed at least 15 people and 40,000 people evacuated after weeks of torrential rains, the latest in Indonesia's battle against a string of disasters consisting of floats and landslides. Local network TV1 shows in Manado, which is located on the northeast tip of Sulawesi Island, high waves washed rock ashore and damaged a business district by the coast. The country's disaster mitigation agency says days of rain also trigger floats and landslides, killing at least six people and evacuate 500. The country's meteorology agency warns of the risk of extreme weather and other float dangers in the coming weeks. Indonesia frequently suffers floats and landslides, particularly during the rainy season from November to March, a situation often worsened by the cutting down of the forest. Pakistan International Airlines plane impound in Malaysia over a jet 14 million lease. The airline says a Pakistan International Airlines plane has been held back by Malaysian authorities due to a British court case over the jet's $14 million lease. An airline spokesman says the Boeing 777 aircraft was seized after a court order. According to the interim injunctions, Pakistan International Airlines restrains from moving two aircraft in its flat, a Boeing 777-200TR with serial number 32716 and Boeing 777-200TR with serial number 32717. Once they have landed or parked at Kuala Lumpur International Airport until a further hearing on the matter later this month. With more than 4 billion in accumulated losses, Pakistan International Airlines was already struggling financially when flights were grounded last year due to the pandemic. After it resumed operations in May, a domestic Pakistan International Airlines flight crashed in Karachi, killed 97 of 99 people on board. Pakistan's aviation industry was then hit by a scandal in which pilots were found to hold dubious licenses, prompting a number of countries to ban Pakistan International Airlines from operating flights in their jurisdictions. Thailand opposition figure accuses government on mishandling the vaccine campaign. A banned Thailand opposition politician who is facing a criminal complaint of defaming the monarchy defend his criticism of the government's coronavirus vaccine strategy that relies on a company owned by King Mahavajira Longkong. Tanatong Juan Rong Ruang Kit accuses the government of Prime Minister Prayu Chang Ocha of mishandling the vaccine campaign. It is too reliant on Siam bioscience and will be slow to protect the public. <laughs> This case is another clear example. The person who dragged the monarchy into the vaccine isn't me. It is Prayut. The talent company is owned by the Crown Property Bureau, the organization that manages tens of billions of dollars in investment under the king's personal control. CM Biosense agreed in October to manufacture AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine and supply it domestically and across Southeast Asia. The government has ordered 61 million doses of AstraZeneca's vaccines for its population, as well as 2 million doses of vaccine made by China's Sinovac Biotech. Both AstraZeneca and Siam Bioscience declined to comment on Tanatorn's allegations. The government has defended its policy and filed a criminal complaint against Tanatorn for his criticism, accusing him of royal insult under Article 112 of the Criminal Code that is punishable by up to 15 years in prison. Tanatorn was banned from politics for 10 years after a court dissolved his future forward party last year for illegal loans. 
South Korean president congratulates Biden on the 46th president of the United States. South Korean President Moon Jae-in sends congratulation message for the inauguration of Joe Biden as the 46th President of the United States. Moon presided over National Security Council, meets with senior official at Blue House, and says that South Korean government hoped the United States rebuild a better country and developed a firm alliance between the two countries. After the Biden's inauguration ceremony, Moon also posted his message on Twitter saying, America is back. America's new beginning will make democracy even greater. Together with the Korean people, I stand by your journey toward America United. Moon, who offers to be a mediator between Pyongyang and Washington, says he will seek an early chance to promote North Korea as Biden's foreign policy priority so that he will follow through on an agreement reached by Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un at their first summit in Singapore. Chinese president calls for Laos efforts to deepen exchanges and cooperation in various fields. In a telephone conversation with Tong Lung Siso Lit, General Secretary of the Lao People's Revolutionary Party Central Committee, she congratulates Tong Lung on election as a General Secretary of the LPRP Central Committee on behalf of the CPC as well as the Chinese government and people. He said he is confident that under the leadership of the new LPRP Central Committee, headed by Tong Lung, all LPRP members and all Laos people will unite as one and strive to realize the goal set at the 11th Congress. China and Laos are friendly neighbors connected by mountains and rivers. She adds that upholding the leadership of the Communist Party and adhering to the socialist orientation are the essential features of bilateral relations. The Chinese leader adds China will continue to support Laos' efforts to fight the pandemic and stands ready to actively consider aiding Laos with a batch of COVID-19 vaccines and willing to work with Laos to strengthen coordination and cooperation in international and regional affairs and promote common development and prosperity. Lao People's Revolutionary Party chief says Laos sincerely appreciates the valuable support and assistance of China that provide in various stages of Laos' development, including its response to the COVID-19 pandemic. In the conversation, she and Tong Long jointly announced the official launch of the China-Laos Friendship Year program, which will feature a series of celebrations to further cement public support for the China-Laos friendship. Vietnam prepares for upcoming Communist Party Congress. Vietnamese ruling Communist Party begins gathering for a Congress that will help shape the country's global role for the next five years selecting new leaders and setting policy as tension bubble with Beijing and Joe Biden settles in at the White House. The Communist Party's 13th Congress from January to February 2nd will cement leadership looking to leverage Vietnam's economic success to bolster legitimacy. This way will be the challenge of balancing regionals with China and the United States for which Vietnam has become an important strategic partner in an economy world. Vietnam's annual gross domestic product growth averaged 6.0% over the past five years and still expanded 2.9% in 2020 despite the pandemic that crushed economies. Vietnam has been successful in containing the coronavirus so far with strict quarantine, testing and tracing measures. A large number of businesses have shifted their capital from China to Vietnam that FDI wave gave Vietnam a boost in the last year so that it could achieve a position, GDP growth, and continue to grow well in 2021. This is an advantage that we need to work harder for because if we had a better investment environment, we would have had many more quality investors that would have moved to Vietnam in the last year. Besides policy, by far the most important item on the party's agenda is personal issues, a euphemism for electing a new central committee and politburo. The Congress will include an assessment of Vietnam's achievements 35 years after the introduction of Doi Moi, the government-led 1986 movement which brought much needed economic and political reforms, and laid the groundwork for the country's rapid development as well as long-term plans to achieve Vietnam's stated ambition to become a high-income country by 2045. Cambodian establishes beer yoga classes with the aim of reducing stress. Okay. 
Srilain Bacha reaches for a beer glass while holding a yoga pose during a recent class in Phnom Penh, wobbling a little to maintain her balance. It's the 25-year-old's first week back in the office since Cambodia's latest virus lockdown ended and she says she's happy to combine in drinks with downward dogs at the brewery that is close to work. Uh, traditional yoga, Yomkitwala, personally. I have more fun with beer yoga. It's not as serious as traditional yoga. The class venue is Two Birds Craft Brewery, located in a former garment factory. The brewery says his class is the first of its kind in the country. Organizers keep numbers limits to a dozen people during each weekly class, which draws in some locals, but mainly expats, with classes costing $8 for an hour-long session, which includes one beer. Well, there are many uh, different types of yoga. Um, a physical practice, I mean, you have vinyasa, hatha, yin. Uh, but I think like the practice we're doing tonight, um, it's more like, how could I put it, like, an introduction to yoga, just, you know, learning the basic moves. It's not like a, a real yoga practice. It's more like a gathering with friends, incorporating yoga moves to like uh, entertainment time with your friends. Cambodia officially recorded 453 cases of coronavirus and no deaths and has been in and out of lockdowns since last year. It was able to remain open alongside other restaurants and other specific venues. So uh, the, the beer yoga, you know, it's all about the community, uh, about the people that come together after work to have a beer and also do a little bit of exercise together. Um, sometimes it is quite hard, like today, um, but it's, you know, if you fall over or something, nobody's going to look at you in a strange way. It's, it's all about the fun and all about having a good time together after work. Thank you for watching and please be remember we're still in the pandemic era. Stay safe, stay healthy by washing your hands, maintain social distancing rule and use your masks. See you.